In this video, I'll show you how to find all the angles of a triangle when only their side lengths are given. And to do this, we'll need to use the cosine law. And the cosine law looks like this, and it doesn't hurt to memorize it. You use the cosine law when you have a situation like this, where you have side, 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 and no angles, or when you have side, angle, side. But specifically in this video, we'll focus on an example where you have all three sides and no angles. The triangle we'll focus on is this one, and the question reads, three light posts are positioned in a park as shown. So assuming that this is a light post, this is a light post, and so is this, calculate the angles between the lights. So they want us to find this angle, this angle, and the third angle is always the easiest to find because you can subtract the angles you know from 180. So to do this question effectively, we'll need to use the cosine law twice. That's one method, of course. There are other methods, but that's what we'll do here. So we'll start off by labeling this triangle. Notice that it's very plain. I'm going to call this A, B, and C. And I'll start off with angle A. I'll try to look for angle A. And the formula, the cosine formula, once again, looks like this. So I'm going to write it down. So if we use this formula in particular, you will find the angle C. In other words, if I fill in my A, B, and C, with their proper lengths, I'll end up having to isolate the big letter C, which represents my angle C. Now, of course, if you want to find A, you'll have to manipulate this formula a little bit. Here's how. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. Now, if you use this version of the cosine law, you will find angle A right away. It doesn't really matter. We'll start off by using either or. Let's pick the purple one. So my A, my little A, is 18. My little B is 20. And my little C is 16. This, this, and this. Filling this out, you should end up with this equation. 18 squared is equal to 20 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 20. Notice that when I replace the B with 20, I put it in brackets. That's because it's connected to another number, too. And we don't want to make it appear like it's 220. Bracket 16. Once again, the same reasoning. Cosine angle A. Now I have to simplify the right side. And to do this, I'll use my calculator. We'll start off with 20 to the power of 2 plus 16 to the power of 2. And you stop right there. And you get the answer 656. So this right here represents 656. Next, you will evaluate these three numbers. Negative 2 times 20 times 16. Negative 2 times 20 times 16. And this gives us negative 640 cosine A. And the left side, 18 squared, is equal to 324. Once you've done this, you want to take this number to the left side, where you will be collecting like terms next. So let's go ahead and do that. If you take this positive number over, you end up with a negative number. 324 minus 656 became negative. And this gives us negative 332 is equal to negative 640 cosine A. It's very important that you do this carefully. If you do not do this carefully, and if you do not do it stepwise, like how I showed you, you're likely to make an error. Next, we'll divide both sides by negative 640. Watch what happens. This 640 and this one cancels out. And on the left side, you're left with 332 over 640. But just to be safe, what I'll do is cancel out these negatives before I do anything else. So I'm just going to leave it as 332 over 640 without doing anything else. Do not even evaluate this. And I'm going to explain to you why. On the right side, we're left with cosine A. A lot of students make the mistake of thinking that our angle is the answer to this, but it's not. To find your angle, you actually have to use inverse cosine. And if you use inverse cosine, you'll end up with an expression that looks like this. 
And I said earlier, do not evaluate this because what some students tend to do is they will evaluate this and they will round the number to two decimal places. And when they use inverse cosine, they end up with an angle that's totally off. So by keeping it as a fraction, you're staying very consistent with your answer. Let me show you. So inverse cosine 332 over 640. And this gives us an exact angle of 58.75. And just to be clear, had you done 332 over 640 and you had gotten the number 0 0.51875 and instead of writing this whole thing down, you only wrote down 0 0.51. Let me show you what would happen. 0 0.51, this angle and this angle are totally off. So now that we found our first angle A, we need to find angle either B or C. I'm going to find angle C because the formula is already written down for us. So I'll do that over here. C is equal to 16 squared. A is 18 squared plus 20 squared minus 2. 18 times 20 cosine C. Using my calculator. 18 to the power of 2 plus 20 to the power of 2. That gives me 724. Next, we'll do this one. Negative 2 times 18 times 20. And that gives me negative 720. Do not be tempted to subtract these two numbers. And 16 to the power of 2 gives us 256. And as we did before, the next step is to bring this over. If I do that, 256 minus 724 gives me negative 468, and that's equal to negative 720 cosine C. Dividing both sides now, as we did before, by negative 720, you end up with cosine, or inverse cosine, of these two numbers. You don't need to write down negative because they'll cancel out anyway, and we're left with 468 over 720, and that gives us 49.45 degrees. Angle C is 49.45 degrees. To find angle B, we'll take 180 degrees, which is the total sum of angles of a triangle, minus 49.45, minus 58.75, subtracting these numbers, 180 minus the answer we just got, minus 58.75. And this gives us an angle B of 71.79. This angle and this angle and this one represent your solutions for this question. And there you have it. That is how to find all angles of a triangle when only the side lengths are provided.